During the height of the Cuban Missile Crisis, President John F. Kennedy imposed a full embargo on Cuba that prohibited all trade. Turns out that this decision from 60 years ago has ramifications to this day. Check out this headline, Americans could beat lung cancer if US lifted blockade of Cuba. Now let me get this straight. They'd rather keep the blockade on, on Cuba rather than collaborating with them to beat lung cancer. Makes all the sense in the world to me. Here is some more context. Medical researchers in Cuba developed a vaccine called Simavax to improve treatment for lung cancer patients. Simavax is a nuclear therapy that harnesses the body's immune system to fight lung cancer. In 2018, Simavax became the first Cuban biopharmaceutical product to earn the US drug regulators permission to carry out limited clinical trials on American soil. This partnership was announced soon after the Obama administration began lifting sanctions on Cuba and normalizing relations. Unfortunately, and we do mean unfortunately, since then, the Trump administration has reversed the Obama era policy towards Cuba and again imposed strict sanctions on the country. As a result, trade and scientific collaboration are as limited as ever. And the Simavax is not available to the public in the US due to blockade restrictions. And things really have not gotten any better under the Biden administration. I mean, we don't have to continue the course of the Trump administration because we have a new president. And that president can go back to the Obama era way of doing things or even enhance that even more and do a new thing with Cuba in the 21st century. How about that? Despite a unifying message in the battle against cancer, in practice, the Biden administration maintains economic warfare on Cuba that prevents Americans from accessing treatments in Cuba. Jessica, I find this too very outrageous. And to me, it doesn't matter what the president, who the president is and what their political affiliation is, this is outrageous. Yeah, it's absolutely absurd. It reminds me of a kind of an interesting story when it comes to how the United States deals with other nations, especially in the context of the Cold War. So there's this story of, of someone going to Russia uh, and, and trying their cheese and saying like, oh, you guys have a bunch of different cheeses that you import from different places. Then when the US you know, and the EU sanctioned Russia, suddenly they didn't have any cheese. And so a few years later, they started creating their own cheese and it was better than the European cheese. And it's this idea that by sanctioning another country, you can make them self-sufficient and find other ways to not rely on you anymore. Things work out a little bit better when we realize that there are different strengths in different regions of the world when it comes to what they offer the global economy. We depend on each other for certain products and certain things like the Amazon rainforest for keeping our air clean and reducing carbon emissions in the atmosphere. So we very much would not like nations like Brazil to cut down the rainforest so that they can grow cattle. But when we sanction other nations, we kind of disrupt this flow of materials from one place to another. And similar things happen in Cuba, but for some reason we have this perception that we're the United States and of course the other nation will be harmed so much more than us. We actually have a lot to learn from other nations and a lot to benefit from when we trade with them and do so fairly. And the fact that we've cut off relations with Cuba has actually hurt us more than it has the Cubans. Yeah, it really has. There is an ecosystem that has a delicate balance, whether we're talking about the ecosystem of nature or the ecosystem of how we deal with one another. And it is disrupted right now. And yes, we are bearing the brunt of that. And with all of this in mind, here are some numbers on cancer related deaths here in the United States 2022 alone. Let's put up this graphic, cancer related deaths in the US in 2022. Lung and bronchitis, got that 21% colon and rectum, 9% pancreatitis, pancreatitis, 8% breast, 7%. So we see those numbers in the 1000, 130,000 and on and on and on. This is again, it's a, it's a stain. It is an abomination on this nation to do that, to, to deprive family, the people who love them of cures for any disease is the wrong way to go. And it's also worth noting that Cuba is ahead of the United States of America when it comes to 
health outcomes. Life expectancy in Cuba is three years higher than in the US at 78.8 years compared to 76.1 years in the United States. Cuba also leads the world with the lowest patient to doctor ratio, 155 to one, while the US trails far behind at 396 to one. So not only do we have a sick care system, the ratio between patient and doctor is not as good as Cuba, even though we thumb our noses down at Cuba, like somehow we're better than them. And guess what? We are not. And in case you're wondering, yeah, Cuba has universal health care. How about that? You know what I want you to do, underline the bolded underscore, exclamation point, message in the bottle on the train, better and universal health care. And both the Cuban government and the United Nations have estimated that the embargo has cost the Cuban economy $130 billion over six decades. It's also worth noting that the US Chamber of Commerce estimates that the embargo costs the US economy billions of dollars each year as well. So not only is this bad for the ecosystem that Jessica and I have been talking about, both the physical ecosystem, the social ecosystem, it is bad for business. And Cuba is doing a thing and they have some resources that we and the rest of the world could benefit from. But the United States of America wants to continue to play games.